Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I guess it's good evening right now. Um, I uh, we come we Hasidim come from people stock that are Bale Mesiris Nefesh all the way back, and I guess they all took it from the Rabbeim. Um, I I and and they're very and uh, very humble about it. Um, I, I want to share my father's story that I only heard many, many years later. That's how he didn't make a big deal about it, you know? And when he told this story, he said there are many more Mufsim miracles. But I don't, still don't know what those, I, I am sorry to say that I don't even know what those other Mufsim were. Um, the, the, the previous Rebbe, Asked at that time, Yiddishkeit, there were no chadorim, no, I mean, whatever there was was in secret, like in the time of Hanukkah. Now that we're coming close, everything was hidden behind in either in basements, in crawler space, in the attics. Only a few at a time with a rabbi, with, with great mysterious nefesh, they would continue teaching the kinderlach, especially since the rebbe. The previous Rebbe said to his Hasidim, please, I beg of you, I've never asked this of anyone. No one should ask someone to have Mr. Snafish. Biz and Leben. Biz obgem your very life. But this is so important that all of Yiddishkeit is in, a, it's, a, it's a, almost a danger of it disappearing. I ask you to, to do all you can to keep, the, our future is in the Kindalach, to keep Yiddishkeit alive by opening Chadorim. And, and, and then the rule was, the law of the land was, you couldn't meet more than a few people at a time or a few children. Anyone that did something against the law faced serious punishment. My father, Zog, uh, Olva Shalom, was one of the, the third generation of that call from the previous Rebbe to go out and do all you can to save Yiddishkeit, the Yiddish Kindalach. So he became a fundraiser. And to collect money was also uh, against the law. No money collection, no learning, no gathering. There were all kind of laws stopping Yidin from Rahman al Islam from learning or our future are those children. And one day he was collecting funds and just and opening little Khadorim and, and finding Rabbeim and going around all over Russia. And one time he came, he had on him a lot of money that he had collected. And he came to this town of the Reblevik, the Rebbe's father, in Yekaterinoslav. And sure enough, the biggest nightmare happened. He was caught. And he knew what, what happens when you're caught. They throw you to the back of the room in, in their station, and then, and then they either shoot you or send you to Siberia. As they were dragging him off the train, he saw another Yid, and he yelled, Rabbi Yid, ich bin a verfallener. Go to Reblevik, go to Reblevik, and ask him to help me. And so the next morning, he doesn't know what happened. I guess Reb Levick had a lot of influence at that time. And not only did they set him free, but they gave him the money back. And of course, he continued with his mission. I want to explain. My father was not the kind of man, man who was not afraid. He was. When we lived in Crown Heights, there were so many locks in their house that if, God forbid, you had to get in there, you could not, no way. And they were afraid. But when it came 
to something so important as saving Jewish kinderlachs, the future of our Jewish nation, he went and did what was asked of him, what was necessary. And we learn a big lesson even now. We cannot vanish Paul from anything around us. We have to stand up and do, know what's the right thing to do, we know. Check it out and go on with what? We learn it from Hanukkah, we learn it from Purim, from any of the, from, from Pesach story. We have to keep going with what we know we are right. We cannot look to the right, to the left, behind us, nowhere. We keep going, just like the Yidden, when they, Nachshim ben Aminadav, he just jumped in and kept going, and the Abishta will find a way to help. And so that is the big message I got from my father, from the Rebbe, and the previous Rebbe. All the way back to our Rebbe, and we know that. Um, and, and, and another very important thing is, Kindalach, is that we always have to be there for others, always. And it's an amazing how the Rebbe taught us. He, he took it to such an extent, I wanted to share with you a story I had personally. We lived in Dublin, Ireland at that time. And my father was a sheikhet in, uh, they were shechting meat for, to make canned meat for Eretz Yisrael, to ship to Eretz Yisrael. At that time there was a big hunger. And there was no food in Eretz Yisrael. And so we had a Jewish mayor at that time, believe it or not, in, 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 in Dublin, Ireland of all places. Robert, Mayor Robert Bris, Briscoe. And because of him, I guess, a lot of shechtim came. And we shechted, and, and they shechted, and they canned those meat and sent it on to Israel. So one day, one of the children, the Marazos actually, you know, Honey Friedman's grandparents, so one of their children, I think, Vulia, you know them? Anyway, he got lost. It was a Purim, and he got lost. We lived near a river. And by the river, uh, we were frantically all looking for him. Now, I was also looking for him. Couldn't find him until a young lady came up my age with him and said, are you looking for this? Is this your? And Baruch Hashem, to this day, he says to when he sees me, you saved my life. I said, no, Lila Zalondik saved your life. So this girl, Lila Zalondik, we, I was Mikar of her. I want to show you what the, how much the Rebbe cared about every Yiddish kind. I have heard about it, but I experienced ab about every person. Personally, I experienced this. One day, so I was Makar of her, and she became my friend. And slowly but surely, she became more from. And one day, unfortunately, Nebuch, her father passed away. And I wrote a letter to the Rebbe for a bracha. Already, we, we were trained to care for another Yid. OK, the Rebbe sent us a letter for them. and. I left shortly after to America. The first Yechidus that I had, the Rebbe doesn't talk to my parents, first turns to me and asks, Um was macht Laila Zalondik? He remembered the name, he remembered everything just so. And he, I said, uh, when I, I, I lost contact with her, he said to me then, it's will sein a gleiche Sach. Also so unhalten Kontakt mit dir. So I did for a while. P.S. About 12 years ago, I started looking for her. I have not found her. I've tried. We've gone very close. People went to Dublin, Ireland. There's a schliech I contacted. No way can we find anything about Lila Zalondik. I'm still looking. I'm not giving up hope. Um, so... Um, 
you want to ask me yeah, anything in Russia in the war years running away from from the Germans so we went with the Russian army we were lucky if we went you know the right the re, in the right town if you went the other way you went uh, with the Germans took you and that was pretty sad thing uh, so we went out through papers that were created. Can you tell us more about those papers? Those papers that were hidden that took, like one of them was uh, Muchkins, the Muchkin brothers. They, after Mr. Snafish, you saw such self-sacrifice there that you can't believe it. If they would be caught, you should interview Khani. She has stories, I mean, her, her stories are millions from her grandmother and Mumasora and et cetera, you must must interview either Hanya Lane or her, and she should get all the information. It's, it's unbelievable stories. And um, so, we're, we're so you, okay. So, you ended up in which town? What? You went to which town? I don't remember, except that I was born in Samarkand. I remember as a child, as we were traveling on the train or whatever, on the way to the border, I remember being told, and this, this left a, a fear in my head about it, that we should hold on tight. It was back and then we tried to pull in to any train going by and, you know, they would cause a lot of uh, sorrows if they got in. And we were told to hold on tight with the doors. I remember to cross the border was a very dangerous affair. Most of the, we went by trucks where the children had to be put to sleep somehow because um, it was, you, can't, you couldn't hear a sound. Then there was part of that was crossing by foot and that was even more dangerous. But somehow we made it, Baruch Hashem, through the crossing, and we went to Austria, Vienna, Austria. There were barracks. I mean, you wouldn't believe how people lived in those days. I mean, you think of what is considered poor here, it's like the biggest joke. I mean, this is, kings lived like that at that point of life. Um, we had nothing. Barracks were divided with one curtain between, uh, you know, each room was a family. And it went on like that after we went to Paris, France. There, also, we lived in one, on each floor, there was one commode for the whole floor. One stove, a little stove. You had to take turns to cook or, or whatever you needed. And one room, if you had many children, you might have gotten a room, another small room. And everything was very, very poor. And we couldn't wait for the Peklach from America. You know, that was, my mother had this school. She was somehow trusted for that. There was a lot, of course, of, no, you use more gas, I use more gas. You pay this bill. Why am I, you know, my mother was the organizer to keep everything going in a fair way. When the Peklach came, she distributed them. And life was, even though it was so very tight, but the children were free and happy and ran around and just, uh, schooling for us was very scarce at that time. There was a teacher that used to come, Mora Dasi Levin, I think Levin, I'm not sure. Anyway, she ended up being my Khani, Shui's wife's grandmother. It's amazing, I loved that teacher. And she'd come twice a week, teach us to read. And that was the extent of it. And, but I remember being very, very um, happy, carefree, you know, as a child. And we had a wonderful, we lived there like five, six years, waiting for the visa to come from America. We were slated to come to Pittsburgh. 
my father, so, you know, came to, to Crown Heights and said, you know what, this is going to aid and I'm not going anywhere. So we had to get a um, lawyer we got and we stayed in New York. But obviously I was slated, somebody from the family was slated to come here. So I ended up in Pittsburgh. And so we spent in Crown Heights, my memories are of the most remarkable, as I look back all the way to Gimel Thomas, we had Mashiach. I mean, it, there was a, a sense of, if the Rebbe would say jump, we'd ask how high should we jump. If the Rebbe said run over there, we ran. Whatever the Rebbe said, it was like one heartbeat. We have to learn that now, again, relearn that. So we have where to learn it from. We have all the Swarim, the Sikhs, the Mamarim, everything that the Rebbe left us. That we need, I mean, I guess that since a young kid I was driven to do something. It was, it was a drive in me. I mean, I, I don't even uh, take much credit on that. But it's interesting. I was always into that mode. Um, when we came to Pittsburgh, oh, so Crown Heights left me with a feeling of, there was a secure feeling of everything is where it should, like, like it's hard to explain. We were, I think that is what, what will be when Mashiach comes, that there is a certain feeling in Mir Hashem very soon that we were in a little cocoon, like all surrounded, and we came, I, I, we used to stand by Fabrengans for hours. Did I see? No. Did I hear? But I would, you wouldn't have me budge from the place, you know, for one minute. This is where we were, growing up with the Rebbe. The early years by the Rebbe was an interesting thing. When my brother became Upshernis, me and my father went with my brother Yisfitzchuk, and we knocked on the door of the Rebbe's office, would you believe it? And he cut, he snipped the hair, the first thing. By Hakafis, the women and girls stood on a table downstairs, and the Rebbe would come right past us, and we would kiss the Sefer Torah. Nigunim was an experience beyond words. We stayed up all night long. And in the morning, in the early hours, uh, amazing, 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 amazing feeling to be there and be singing. Uh, to, to, we also stayed, the Bachram were on one side and the girls were on the other side. Some more ex vivid experiences were the Lagba Omer parade. Again, the Rebbe said, do, and everybody did went into it. You know, we stayed up nights working on it. It was awesome. I, I, there's no words to explain how united and, and how purposeful and we had a goal all the time. Now, let's go to Pittsburgh. I remember the Mif each time a Mifta came out. Again, the Rebbe had that personal touch with Rabbi Chadr Kovi would instruct him. So Mifza Purim came, we'd get a phone call. This is what the Rebbe wants. Next day another phone call, and another, and another, and another. Until you felt if you had to make sure that the Rebbe was pleased with what we were doing. So the first time, I remember with Shalach Manis, the Rebbe said, we should give two baskets to whoever we can. Knock on doors, neighbors, hospitals, you name it. So we took, um, like, and, and there were two dimes in each. One they should keep, and one they should give for the stuff. And Matan uh, And then we went, so to me, the first time I heard it, I said, I don't know how they'll think, you know, how are they going to accept? 
I mean, a little basket, I'm going to knock on the door, you know, that, to my neighbors. How are they going to accept it? And it was a question, but who wouldn't do it? Of course you did it. And then the, the, the Purim baskets, we had to bake it and make it and set it up. I mean, it wasn't like you call up uh, the place and you get all these hundreds of little ready-made things. We did it. That time yeah, at Reina, she should have a Rafur Shlema and her husband, ex before, they organized all this and it was, I, I worked hand in hand with them. We were both did, my husband and I, and it was an amazing success. And my first knock to a neighbor, and I was shaking. I was trembling how they would accept it. It was new in the beginning. Purim was not something Han Pittsburgh knew about. Hanukkah they did, but not Purim. So my first experience was so positive and so good that I, I went on from there, and again, for a week or so, until after Purim, or before and after, calls came, give us numbers, give us how many, who did you give it to, where did you go? And this is how each mitzvah was handled. And of course, we responded. We, you could not help but go out of yourself and do it. Like, you know, now I sit every day almost and do mitzvahim, Baruch Hashem. But there was a period when I, I was terrified of it. It's an interesting story, what really cured me of that fear. I mean, who wants to approach strangers? It's very difficult. Now, one day, uh, I was teamed up with Bluma Wallen, Allah Shalom. No? And she was, at that time, that's a whole story, how we knew her from way back when. So Bluma, I walked over to Bluma and I got like, I said, Bluma, first of all, she had this big dog and that was already undid me. I said, Bluma, you to ask people and I'll help you. She looks me up and down and she says to me, Miriam, what kind of Lubavitcher are you anyway? That's it. Cured. From that day on, I was able to do Mifzayim, Baruch Hashem, and it became something we must do all that the Rebbe asked of us. The Rebbe said, get, prepare yourself and the world for Mashiach. We have to, each one of us can find Kinderlech too, can find something they have to, even if they take a diary and write down every day, what did I do for myself? How did I improve me? And what did I do for the world? It is in, in, very important. And when we're busy with that, there's no room for anything else. Then, then of course, the, the Abish is going to see how we are all together working for a world of good. And of course, he'll say, of course, we're ready. Now we're ready for Mashiach. OK. Where was the, do you, do you remember the Rebbe Shmuchana on the train? Only one, because we went in as Chos I remember how gracious and how humble. And very like, yeah, you and me are just, you know. So she set up a whole, you know, table. We walked in with my, I think my mother was with us. I don't remember now. And uh, that's the only time I saw her. When you, do you remember anything from that train when you came out from Russia? No, no, I do not remember from that train. I just know there's a lot of fear about it. That I do remember. Do you, you went into Yechidas many times. Do you remember the Yechidas? You mean as a girl? I don't no. remember. But it was an interesting story when we went every year. Every year we went with the family. And one year, th at that time, the rabbi said, you kocht in that little girls should also bench licht. So we came in at that time with my three girls and my three boys, can I learn? And my oldest was already like nine and then eight. And then Hani, my the youngest of the three girls was four. 
So the Rebbe turns to me and asks me, the bench in Lichtam? I said, the grace, said, yeah, but nicht the kleine. He said, this nicht kein kleine, this a grace, ihr weißt doch, dass ich koch sich jetzt in, 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 Licht. Wie kann sein, as, 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 as it sind noch nicht? Of course, she lit the next, next Shabbat, she lit candles. Very quickly, we did that. An interesting story uh, that I had re uh, years back, we were always busy with something. And at that time, it was, um, there were a lot of uh, liver, this was the main thing for liver transplants and all kind of um, associated illnesses with that. So we had here a young man whose wife was Nebuch in uh, whatever, she ended up in Pittsburgh. And we became very good friends. His name is Mechel Rappaport. He's not a Lubavitcher, but he is a cl what we call a closet Lubavitcher, as you'll soon hear. So as I we used to come, we'd help all these families with food and whatever, and Mechel came to us for Shabbos many times. She stayed quite a few months. And one Friday, I brought them food. <coughs> and I see the father and mother there. So the father gets very excited when he saw me. And he says, Ihr weiß nicht, wer ihr Rebbe ist. Ihr meint, as er is ihr a Lubavitcher no Rebbe. Er is a Welts Rebbe. I said, tell me more. What happened? They were so appreciative of what was done for their child here, their daughter, that when they were traveling back and forth to visit her, they met a Lubavitcher Sephardi couple. And they were very poor, and they helped them to prepare for the wedding. And they asked the chosen that when he goes past the, the Rebbe, that he should ask for a bracha for his, their daughter. Now, Feige Bas Eige, something like that, or a funny name, I don't even remember the second name, the mother's name. So the chosen came in front of the rabbi and it got to tumult. He remembered the first name, but not the second. And the rabbi added the second name, the mother's name. And when they heard, how did he know it? How on earth did he know? I said, for me, it's not a wonder. I had an experience already with the rabbi where he remembered he, he, when I first came, he, he mentioned Lila Zalondig by name. I had written one time because they used to write to the rabbi too many times. They were closet Lubavitcher, literally. He'd, he'd come to every from Brengen, this Mechel. And Baruch Hashem, you know, you know, so this is an amazing effect that the Rebbe had. This is one, two stories. There are millions of stories. I'm just telling you my own personal few stories that we experienced. And now maybe, um, Froim, would you like to take over? Yeah. Rebbe Froim, when did you... You were born in America. I was born in Montreal, Canada. Oh. I was a Talmud in the, in the Lubavitch Yeshiva in Montreal from 1940, 42 or 43, till 1948, until after my bar mitzvah. Uh, after my mitzvah, the next year, I decided I wanted to go to Mesifta Teravadas. My friends were going there. So I decided to go to Mesifta Teravadas. They were in Lubavitch, but my friends, that's where my friends were going. I wasn't necessarily interested in following Lubavitch all the way. But of course, the chinuch I had was a very, very strong Lubavitch chinuch. There were the, the, the nine shluchim that, that, that were there. The last one that passed away was Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Weinberg, Allah Shalom. So uh, I was invited to the chasana of Rabbi Hash Fegelstock which is the, the, the grandfather of the Fegelstock field here. And I was there that the first time I saw the Rebbe. It was in 1949. It was the, in, 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 in the Cheshren, Toshin Yud. 
and he wasn't the, the Rebbe yet. And I, I, I never saw the Dacheres, the Gaelic the Trenin Dacheres, they left. I ne the, the other Rosh Hashiva I saw, never, they made room for him, and, uh, the, and I watched very, very closely. At that time, it seems a, a little bit of my old Lubavitcher spirit became a little bit awakened. So Yutes Kislev, Tovshi Yud, that time it was on Saturday night. So we decided to go to, the, myself and there's another book we learned in Worcester, decided to go to Lubavitch. So we took the bus, I went to, the, to, to Lubavitch. When I came there, I went to the Ephraim, what are you doing here? But there was no Fabrengen, and they told me the Rebbe wasn't feeling well, the Ferdek Rebbe, and it could be that tomorrow he'll Fabreng. So I came in the afternoon to the Fabreng, and I came early, I stood near a barrel Bumgart of Shalom, upstairs on the, on the, on the, and uh, Rabbi Simpson said, don't push, we'll let in, Einzig Weiss, singly, we'll let you in, but I didn't let anybody in, only certain people. So I decided to leave, so I went down the stairs, and the Bochrim that were there said, don't leave, because after the Fabrengen, when the Fabrengen ends, they let the Bochrim into Selachayim. So I waited, I waited, and I talked, they let the Bochrim in, I remember, I got in, and all the Bochrim went to Selachayim, and I saw the Fred the Kerebbe in a spot, you know, I became frightened, I was before my 15th birthday, and I went to hide. I, I, uh, and then I knew exactly where <laughs> where it was, uh, and since then I, I I came to the Levaya, you know, to the funeral of the Frederick Rebbe, and he attended every single Fabrengen from the from, from the, the, the Rebbe afterwards to even Yutas Kislev, Tovshin Yud Aleph, when 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 uh, be, be, be before the Rebbe, had, he sat in, in in the middle in, in the middle table, didn't sit in front. I was there, Tovshin Aleph, I was there also. I was by, by the boss of the Gane, I was there. I didn't know something was going on, but I was there. And uh, since then I came to every single Fabrengen that, that the Rebbe had, and, 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 and I came. When the Rebbe started the mime of Basel again, did you...? I didn't know, I was nothing. It, it, it was, I, I was, I was, I was right after my 15th birthday. Who knew? I didn't know, I did nothing. I, I just thought it was a big crowd there. I didn't understand really what was going on, but I was, uh, I was in Tevedas, 15 years old, a kid. Uh, I was never exposed to chassidus of any kind, but, but I was there. Every Fabrengen, I was there. Every, every single Fabrengen, I was there. Every single Fabrengen. When was the first time you went to chassidus for the Rebbe? Oh, oh. There was Rav Binyamusen, the, the, the old Rav Binyamusen. He knew me from Montreal. So he told me, Ephraim, if you want, I can arrange a chassidus for you by the Rebbe. He arranged it. I went to the Yechidah the first time. I was a kid, uh, uh, 16 years old. <clears throat> and the Rebbe the told me I shouldn't sit down, so I didn't sit. And the Rebbe asked me, was learned here, as if talk, talk to I told him I was learning with Mr. Skitten then. He asked me a couple of questions of the Gary, right? And uh, when I answered the questions, Machleka Sabarnova, whatever. So I answered the question, so he explained to me, he said that the thing, get in, the thing of divorce, I said, I'll say it in English, I'll say it in Yiddish, does a shak to Yedin, applies to every Jew. You have to divorce the Yitzhahara. And he went to explain the, 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 the connection between Rabbi Novel, the Shema, and the Nekaimai, and then he told me I should have a Seder in Musar, but I told him at that time I went every every week to, to learn chassidus with. Uh, they're not here, not the Dovdraska and Beryl Yunik, but I say it's good. And that was the the the, the, the chidus. And uh, I went in the second time to chidus afterwards. And uh, my parents had wanted me to go to college. So I took tests, went to college, whatever. But but then I said I'll only go if the Rabbi Sheba approves. So then I I, uh, I went to a uh, I went into Yechidas. I got a point. It was easy to go into Yechidas. It wasn't. It was, the, it was the, 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 the early years. So I got an appointment, and the Rebbe again asked me what I learned, and he tried to, in a certain in the the the, the, the in of Kashzon uh, Kashzon uh, and he asked me a few questions back and forth, and uh, he wasn't satisfied with my answers. 
And he told me, you know, when a bocher learns, he has to want to understand what he learns. He did he, he wasn't satisfied. Then I asked him the obvious good question, what about what college? He told me that time, until age 20, you shouldn't go to college. So he asked the obvious question, at age 20, should I go? He said, until you're 20, he says that I was 16 and a half or 17, I'm well older than, he says, and until then, he says, Mashiach, Mashiach can come and redeem all the Jews. He'll be included in that. So what do you have to worry about that was going to be? When I was 18 and a half, I came to 770 already. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but the Rebbe never told me to change yeshivas. He don't, he did And afterwards, Simchus Ter Toshin Yudalad, which was the end of 1953, my sister was was married to a Lubavitcher, Chaim Moshe Kahanov, and I was I spent Simchus Terry there, the whole Simchus Terry there, and Israel Chaykin, Rabbi Israel Chaykin, who was formerly the Rav in in, in 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 Sweden, he was in in in, in he was in Belgium now, huh? he's now in, uh, and he 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 uh, was mekara me very much, and he p p pulled me in, and th th at that time there weren't any any benches, there was. Bukhrim danced with a circle around the Rebbe, and he put the Rebbe and Rashak danced with a circle of Bukhrim. The Eila wasn't, uh, and he pulled me in there now. So after, so I was there the whole Simchus Tere. After Simchus Tere, my wife had an opportunity to go into Free Echidus. She had to go with, with her cousin of mine, right? And the Rebbe asked her, how was Simchus Tere? Did all the guests leave? Yeah. The Rebbe asked her, did your brother also leave? So, the, so she, uh, Told me, uh, though he's New York, they would say, no, he's learning to have a dance. But, to, but, uh, but to, why don't you try to hold him back here? She said, where's her? She said, I mean, to hold him back in yeshiva, he's to learn here in Lubavitch. So uh, she told me, whatever it was, they, they didn't want to tell him to to try to be Makarovi, but Alkhavon, she told me, and this was Saturday night, Parshas Noyach. I couldn't sleep Saturday night, I couldn't sleep Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Monday night I decided I'm, 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 I'm going to listen. So uh, they got me Yechidus Tuesday night to go into the Rebbe. And I told the, the, the Rebbe that, what well, the Hebrew again, they told me what the Rebbe said. The Rebbe said, Vestuton, will you do it? I said, yeah. Then uh, I asked the Rebbe, what should I tell them? He says, tell them. It was fair to learn to the Hasidic Shi Yeshiva, and it was right to learn the Hasidic Shi Yeshiva. You learned the Hasidic Shi Yeshiva before. He wanted her. I told him, I can't tell them, tell them that. Because the, the, I'm going to, <laughs> because, the, because the Rebbe told me. He says, you can tell them whenever you want to, he says, but don't tell a lie. You must tell the truth. You can't tell a lie. Tell the truth. But I had a time I wanted to go to class, whatever it was. Make a long story short. Uh, this was Shabbos Parshas. Uh, this was Tuesday. Shabbos Parshas Lech Lecha. I went to Tervedas. I took all my stuff, moved it to my sister's house, went into the Rashiva that was Rabbi Gadol Yishor, and I spoke to him. And he, whatever it was, he didn't give me a hard time. And Shabbos Parshas, he says, your, when your parents will hear, they're probably very satisfied. So that Saturday night was already in Lubavitch. So my parent, I called up my mother. She says, you, you know, you, you know, you have a brother once in Lubavitcher. They may try to get you to Lubavitcher. I said, I'm already here. I'm here. The, 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 the Rebbe told me to go to Rabbi Menflik to test me, to fire me. And uh, Rabbi Menflik was a very serious shayid. And he wanted to know exactly what's, what was the lotion. Did the Rebbe tell you that you should tell me that he told me that, whatever. But I'll come around one there. And he, he tested me on a, on, on a certain place in Baba Basu, I was learning then. And he says, oh, you do this game in 770, you. So I came to 770. That was, my, uh, that was after, that's Parsha Shlach in 1953. It was Tovshin Chof, Tovshin But it, it was still 53 cause, uh, because uh, it, it was, uh, okay. And, uh, uh, Again, I came to all the Fabringans, uh, uh, was part of yeshiva then, I was, I was learning. I had chavrusas here, there, the chavrusas, and, and, uh, and, uh, 
then of course I became part of the group, <laughs> part of the. Uh, there was times when I, a little later, a year later, two later, I tried to join the group that uh, joins Chazora, that tries to repeat it, you know, and. Uh, but of course, I, I knew very little then, but I tried, <laughs> I tried, I'd repeat a sikh, I'd say it over, whatever, whatever. And Baruch Hashem uh, said, yeah, in 19, in, in, uh, in July, I think, what was, it was, uh, I went into the, I, I decided to go on America Shlichus. America Shlichus, when, when the Bachram would, would, would go out, there were, f four of us went. The, O only one of them knew how to drive a car. That was uh, Gershon Bear Jacobson, Halal Sholem. He was the editor of the Agamemnon uh, Journal. And there were three, and there, were, there was Sholem Feldman, who was uh, who was in Israel. There was Israel Chaikin, who was a Bokhar yet, and myself. We went first to Washington. I came to a, to, a, to, a, to a place there, and that time I decided, with Shavuos, before Shavuos, I, I used to, sh I shaved it, I didn't have a, a beard then. And I was hoping that the Rebbe will tell me to grow a beard, but the Rebbe didn't say anything. This time when I went, it was the middle of the, th of the I, I, we went and uh, in, we left after you, you, you after you based Thomas, and decided this is it. And now I'm going to grow a beard, and. Uh, I didn't shave it with it. But we were in a car accident. What would we went first first to to, to, to Washington and uh, and uh, we were, I was in a house there and whatever it was and uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I made someone promise he's gonna put film or whatever it was. It's a long story but I never got back to Washington because I really accident. And and what happened was that most of the Bukharin would leave after Shabbos Mavarkimov and they'd go for about three weeks and come, less than three weeks, and come back for Chafov. We decided, on the other hand, the book wanted to go earlier, so we decided we'll leave immediately after Yud Beis Tamas, and we'll come back for Shabbos of Archimov, which is Shabbos of Archim, uh, Matis at that time, Matis. But what happened was a Thursday night on, on uh, 95 North, Going to going to, uh, uh, to we got into a car accident near Elkton. Yeah. Seems we fell asleep. We went into the back of the truck, and we were, <laughs> and everyone else everyone else was conscious when the one, when they took him out, and I was uh, unconscious. The only one who was unconscious was me. And in fact, the newspapers re the newspapers reported then that uh, they thought I had a fractured skull, whatever. But thank God it wasn't that. But I was unconscious for a while. And uh, I remember coming out of right, and uh, I don't know. We, were, we were in that car accident, and of course immediately they, they notified the Rebbe. We got a telegram from the Rebbe on Shabbos, on air of Shabbos, that uh, you know that uh, cover full shleim everything. And I was I had to be off my feet for six weeks. Couldn't get off, n not even to go to the, nothing. After six, I couldn't I, I couldn't step off. And of course, uh, the devil was aware of everything. And uh, my mother came to, she found out, she, she, no one was supposed to tell her, but she found out. And she, uh, the way she found out, and she, uh, and she came to visit me on Tishabov. And she asked the devil if she could take me home. And the devil agreed to, to allow her to take me home. That time the devil sent with her a, a, a gift, a pocket time, it said for me, which I have around. Uh, Somewhere, somewhere I pushed it. We moved, so I, right, and uh, I was there. I, I couldn't come back for some chesteri because I was still recuperating, and uh, I came back after some chesteri. So Mendel Simpson comes over to me and says, "The Rebbe wants you to go in on Yechidas tonight now." So I, uh, I went into the Yechidas. Never says, "Ich will be pushed fragen, was du machst." I simply want to ask you, how you doing? So I told him I was, etc., etc., and he gave me a brach. And, uh, uh, yeah. and that, uh, that, 
Another interesting thing that well, I, I, I learned how to drive very late. I, was, I didn't learn how to drive until I was 30 or so. And I, I, I failed a couple of tests, one after the other. So I went into the, just a, just. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. I've to go up Okay. So uh, I didn't know if I should continue learning how to, how to drive. So I went into the Rebbe and I told him, you know, if I was learning how to, how to drive, should I continue or not? The Rebbe said, ganz gleich, so sich eis lernen treiben, so es voran gesundheit und tun gute Sachen. That's what he told me. So I learned how to drive and the next test I passed and everything was... Uh, 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 there was another interesting story. My brother, Velvo, my younger brother, had problems with his teeth, they, they, they stuck out, so he had to go to the dentist, but uh, they had to pull some teeth in order to, to make room for the teeth. So my, Rebbe, so my mother wrote to the Rebbe, and she wrote to the Rebbe, it's faithful, so I'm very doubtful of what to do with, with, with my son. So the Rebbe answered her, Noch den wir gesehen den Nissim, for the Rebbe should go to her elder and zoom. Can't you zogn the tzvayful? After you saw the miracles, the Eber Shaddam is your older son, you can still say you're in doubt. Also, there's another interesting thing. After I did, uh, we had the accident, the next Shabbos was Shabbos Parshas Matos. And of course, we, we were in the hospital, we were not by the Fabrengen. And the Rebbe spoke by the Fabrengen. You can see it's written down the Sikhas that uh, the Rebbe said, says, Do etchen bochrim. There are a few bochrim was Daphne a Fuhr Schlemer, the leader of Fuhr And the Rebbe spoke that time about Nadorim, about the thing of vows. How the difference is that if a person marries a woman and he says, uh, I, I, I want to marry you on condition that you didn't have any illness, right? And she was healed afterwards. It's a question of Kedushin because she was healed. But if, I, if he marries a woman on condition that she had no, no Nadorim, no vows, and she nullified her vows as if the vows never were there. But the Rebbe says that the, the tshuva is compared to refuah, and just like when a person does tshuva, not only can he, can he make up for the past, but it can be even better than the past. So refuah must be the same way, that a person can be healed, that it should be better than before. The Rebbe says, let us all give a bracha that those bachrim who have neither refuah should be better than before. Baruch Hashem, we, 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 we got the bread. That's the bread that the Rebbe, the Rebbe gave us. And there's another time when uh, my mother wasn't feeling well, and she asked me to go and do we going into the Rebbe to tell the Rebbe I'm, I'm not feeling well. So the Rebbe said to her, she needs betochen. She says, you know what? So I'm, I'm giving advice, let her go to a doctor and let her go let her do what, 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 what the doctor tells her. And she says, You want what I say? I say the more she'll have the tochen, faith in the Kaddish Baruch Hu, the less she'll have to go to doctors. I'm just repeating, okay, you can ask me questions if you want, but this and this is, uh, I repeat a couple of things from my experiences. So, uh, you went into Yechidus every year. Yeah. You have to have lots of yeah, one year when I was by Yechidus, the Rebbe told me that <coughs> he says, Jews come to shul and they say Kaddish. But if they don't put film, it's a ganze iber kernish mit 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 in the shama. If they the shul and they say Kaddish, don't put film, it's a whole turmoil with the neshama. So I should go to the shed, I should go to the Shamoshim, I should go to, you know, to, uh, and tell them, I, I went to Pittsburgh and tell them that they should, when the Jew has to say Kaddish, they should put, they should put the, the tzum on him. And it helped. So I went, I took it, went to Shamoshim, and I, and, I, and I told him, and I mentioned it to, to, to him, and it helped a few times when, 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 when I told someone, this whole story, he began putting film, he hadn't put film before, they had to say Kaddish. I told him that the whole term of Neshama. So the Rebbe said, uh, the Rebbe said, I'm, 
המלאק תפילנס ומזוקטר שם קדש, זה הגן צעיר וקרן שפיד נשמה. There's one more thing. I had, go, I had read the sikhs of the Merkur Shluchim before, and the Rebbe always said it in the, uh, in the sikhs, Ford gesund und kund gesund. This time when we went into the, to the Rebbe, you can check it out, he did not say for gesund und kund gesund. And you can check it out on the internet. Eh? So, the, so, uh, so we had a brach from the Rebbe. And, uh, the yeah, the yeah. The, the Rebbe told me once, he asked me if we have day camp in Pittsburgh. And I told him I was not there. The Rebbe said that I Zen, as well Zen, and Pittsburgh are day camp. The Rebbe said there should be a day camp in Pittsburgh. And I, I was out of the, I was ahead of the day camp for a number of years. They did the I import. Uh, council, we got councils from here, because I suppose it wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, it was expensive, but there was a day camp. But I was then, I was then at a day camp in Pittsburgh. Then the Rebbe also told me once that, uh, that, uh, that uh, I should think about buying a house here. So I asked the Rebbe, should I, should I do it? The Rebbe said, if the derach of the shluchim is to buy a house, then you should also buy a house. So there are, there are a few houses there, and finally we ended up in, uh, a few years later, we bought our first house, and uh, I remember every house I, uh, we, we looked, I wrote to the Rebbe the details. The Rebbe said this had the concern here, a concern there. Finally we settled on the house, Nicholson Street, where, where I was, and uh, we bought the house. We were there, we were there for uh, over 40 years. <laughs> yeah, the first, the first, Second night we were there, Rabbi Simpson was there, and 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 if I bring in the house, you know. Here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, sure. He used to come. He used to, he used to come to Pittsburgh. He, he was the he 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 would come for 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 for, uh, for my net. Yeah, if I bring the house, that was the first. The, the furniture was still all over the place, so if I bring in the house, and. Uh, and uh, so the first I bring. So what year did he come here? I don't know, he was still Masada Kedushim by Yisro. But it was really weak. What other Yechidahu? You raised a family to Naim Avada. Mm -hmm. You raised a family. Yeah, we, went we once went into Yechidahs with the children. The, the once went to Yechidahs right after Shruas. And I only did, the only two kids were my oldest kid, my old, my two old, older daughters. And she was crying. The Rebbe took out a silver dollar and gave it to her in her hand. Someone said, okay. We once went to Echidus with, with uh, all the children, not all the children, but I'm not sure the twins were born then. I don't know if they were born then or yet. But uh, the Rebbe said, Zay Benchen Baechlicht. So my wife said, the elder Benchen. Means the two older old benchen, over the kleine bench bench noch nicht. So the kleine said, "Wie alt is she?" I think she was three or four. The Rebbe said, "Sie doch schon agresse. Ich koch sich in dem, als er on benchen licht." And she went. So she began benching licht, and she uh, got a friend that was a, f a friend, and she got. She, she wrote the Rebbe. She the Rebbe sent two dollars, one for her. And one for for her friend. Uh, then then the Rebbe asked at that time my older daughter had a, a, a mark on her face. So the Rebbe said, "Voices by our elder of important." I might say someone threw a toy cigarette. Why? So we told the Rebbe, "The that was a 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 there was once a very interesting story with me that someone had suggested a shidduch for me, not a Lubavitcher. And I told the Rebbe the shidduch, and then I volunteered myself, or maybe it's better for me to wait for a suggestion from Anash. The Rebbe says, ganz gleich, doctor. Wart not so often, Anash.
That's a couple of the idea, yeah. I once asked, asked the, the, the Rebbe what I should learn in Chesidus. So the Chesidus so Rebbe says in Halacha, you should learn either Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch or, or Kitz or Shulchan Aruch. In Chesidus he says, do you have the Parsha Shavua, you have the Tereir uh, and Lechle and, and, and the Tereir. Uh, as far as but what to learn be, you have to speak to your Mashpiyim. That was in Yeshiva. No, I was a Bogah, a Yagaman. Oh, you in your mind? You were here? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that? This is, I think, I covered more or less You've something. You've got many letters, I'm sure, over the years. You've got letters from the Rebbe. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, more or less. I had, I had an interesting story with my mother. My mother woke up, she wrote to the Rebbe about me before, and uh, I had an interesting story in Toshin to, to, to Zion. I think that my VM letters was Vov Shvat. So I always went in right around the my VM letters. So the Rebbe said, I never knew why. He said, It was the Zayn of an oil. So it was the Maskir Zayn as Badir's VM letters. I didn't have a toll then, because you're freaking shy. It was the Maskir Zayn as Badir's VM letters. My mother had an interesting story. She'd had a dream. She saw the fair to Kareb in her dream. I don't know. She'd seen the picture before. Her. And we had one gas stove then. Everyone had had one, 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 one gas stove. And we used one, 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 one fire kit for milchiks. So the Rebbe asked her, Un vi, vi tutim et milchiks un fleishiks. So the Rebbe told her, So he told her to use this fire. Once he asked her, she put up a mechitza. And she never. She said it in her dream. He says, "We took the milk sensations." I think we covered more or less. Shabbos Parsha Zocher Tov Shin Chai. The seder of Chassidus started at eight o'clock in the morning till till nine thirty. I came in a little bit before eight, and was still wearing my coat. And the Rebbe walks in and looks around to everybody. And uh, he went over to Dovod Raskin and he told him to zug a mimer in his room. The Rebbe walked him downstairs, who went down for a coffee and cake. He went into the room and says, lock the door. No one's at the bottom of the Yale wasn't there. He wasn't there. But, uh, the, uh, and uh, there, there were, I think, I th Avram Hashem was there. Maybe, I don't recall if you saw Fid was there or not. Maybe, I, I, maybe I don't recall. And Achred, he spoke with Hamolek and, and in the sign of Hamolek. And, and, and each one was there, there were maybe 35 people in the room. Each one felt that I was talking to, to, to them. I thought that I was Mamish talking to me. That's one of the times that I, I was there to be in there. Uh, Three years later, I, I, I got I got married, and I was a chos in Shabbos of Arachim. I was a chos in Shabbos Parshas Zohar. I got married right before Purim, uh, Parshas Zohar, and I I, I, I ran. A shamer should watch me to go to seven seventy. I thought I should say a mimer, but uh, so I, I uh, that was also one one of the. It's a tremendous experience of being in the Rebbe's room when the Rebbe locked the door. No one's out in. No one no, no came up. Wasn't there, wasn't there. And I was there, Baruch Hashem. You went in as a Bacha every year and the Rebbe fahed every year? No, he didn't fahed every year. He, but, but the Rebbe was very <laughs> stuck. The Rebbe had, uh, the Rebbe once, once gave him a son to Bracha. Later, like a Bar Mitzvah Bacha. The Ebrishes will have the the health and the health and all the nachas from there, and those will have the nachas from Zichalein. I'll be my rachiyam mister many years <laughs> to have some nachas. Wow. The Baruch Hashem is the kind of the 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 Rebbe had to slap me off from. It was like, yeah. A pro yeah. Yeah? yeah. The Rebbe had promised my mother 
Er wird sich bestattet sein in mein Simcha. So when uh, I was about to get married, the Rebbe had stopped being with Sadr Kedushin. So uh, my mother said, the Rebbe said, it's a to sein. He said, it's a to sein. How? And he said, that when he said, that when he came to the Chuppe, he said, I'll call the Herzog, I'll call the 770, and my dear said, I'll call the Chuppe. And he did that, and uh, that's it. Uh,